I'm sure you are familiar with the issue of adapting to the digital transformation space. You know, the businesses we do and the way we do our businesses is changing significantly simply because of the invent of digital. Now, there are two ways to respond to this uh, whole animal of digital. One is to lament about it because it creates disruptions for many businesses. The other is to see or smell an opportunity in this whole business of digital and see how can we leverage the power of digital for our benefit in terms of using the technologies to be able to be a disruptor for somebody else or for that matter, to drive efficiency and, and change. So that's the second big uh, change that I was talking about in terms of challenge. With respect to uh, change management itself, you know, uh, while post-liberalization, each business has been facing competition and has been changing uh, given the changes in the environment. But what has changed is the pace of change. You know, because of these disruptions that we are talking about, uh, if we are not aware, we are not careful, suddenly we realize that volumes drop and we are out of business. So to be able to manage this change, the bulk of the responsibility has to be undertaken by the middle and the senior management. And in that sense, it's important to understand you would agree that it's a human nature to resist any kind of change. And I think that is where the middle and the senior management has to deal with this change management, resistance to change, as well as make sure that we are an organization where innovation can thrive. The people management. While people management has always been you know, important for any business, but what has changed now is this that we are talking about a young workforce, which is very different from the workforce that we have had in our times, right? The young force, aspiration of the young workforce is very different from what we had seen before. Now, what is challenging is this, that how do we acquire talent and make teams, those whose values and purpose and intentions are aligned with that of the organization. Otherwise, there is a misfit. And more importantly, how do we create employee engagement, which is sustainable and uh, meaningful? So talent management, people management has become more complex, but at the same time, an interesting space to be in. The next one that I will talk about is in terms of decision-making and uncertainty. Uh, you couldn't agree more with me. I suppose that when I say that post-pandemic and pandemic world is a different world altogether and uncertainty of all kinds are all around us in terms of uh, war and unstable neighborhood and a uh, whole host of things. Now, the question is, in such uncertain times, we have to continue to take decisions, manage our teams, keep them excited, and deliver value to our shareholders. It is very likely that if we are not careful in these uncertain times, simply out of pressure, we may end up taking decisions which are not based on data, which are not based on risk assessment, or which are not based on what is good for various stakeholders. So to be able to understand all this in a calm fashion is the order of the day. What I would call it managing by uh, as you go, or you know, you always have to be on, uh, on your toes to be able to manage and staying calm. Globalization and uh, managing diversity. Two things here. First is with respect to diversity. You know, diversity is a great positive for the organization. A great organization is one where we have diversity of skill sets, diversity of ideas, diversity in terms of gender, because a diverse team is a productive team. So how do we put together a diverse team is the first issue. Second is you would agree that all businesses are becoming global, whether we like it or not. Now, the moment our businesses become global, either we are sourcing globally or we are selling globally or we are acquiring uh, our talent from global sources, 
you know, we have to deal with these issues of uh, differences in language, differences in culture. And that's the reason I would say the cross-cultural competencies is going to be one big challenge for most of us in the middle and senior management. Otherwise, we won't be able to deliver as much value as the organization expects of us. The issue of maintaining work-life balance, it's not only a fancy thing in terms of uh, to talk about managing work-life balance, but it is becoming very, very important because you know, increasingly the middle and the senior management positions are becoming very stressful. And I would say to be able to manage the business smartly, first we need to manage ourselves smartly. So I think the focus should also be on managing yourself first so that you can manage your business better. And that alignment, uh, many of us forget to pay attention to. And then as a result, it has had lots of negative effect. So I would like to take some few minutes to talk about what are the key challenges uh, most businesses face in today's context and going forward. The very first one I would talk about is, which is very, very contemporary, is the issue of sustainability and ESG. I'm sure you are familiar with the phrase ESG. It stands for environment, social, and governance, and the issue of sustainability. Uh, you would appreciate that few years ago, the, the issues of uh, ESG and sustainability were largely uh, tick the box exercise or a lip service exercise. But I, what I must say is that uh, in, a, you know, in the past few years, it has you know, gotten the attention of the investing community, of the customer community in ways that we have never seen before. So I think something very new that all businesses have to grapple with as to how do we do a business where we are environmentally conscious, do not leave a lot of carbon footprint, we are socially responsible, and also our governance standards are very high. And uh, in fact, uh, many investors are not willing to uh, invest in organizations who do not have very high standards of ESG or sustainability. 